Welcome back, pet parents. I just got back a few days ago from this year's Super Zoo. Uh, if you're not familiar with Super Zoo, we're going to talk all about it today. And I'm just going to give you like a quick rundown recap of what it is. Um, notable things that I saw that I noticed, some wonderful people that I ran into. I have a swag bag here full of stuff. Um, I actually did not bring home as much stuff this year as I normally do, but I think that's also because my like intentions for this year's show were a little bit different, but we'll talk about all of that. Um, first and foremost, if this happens to be the first time you are listening or watching me, uh, my name is Jessica. I am a canine nutritionist, a holistic pet health coach, positive reinforcement dog trainer, and the host of this podcast that you are listening to right now. So welcome. We talk about everything, um, holistic, whole, W-H-O-L-E, um, everything for your dogs and cats to help educate you to make sure that we are pushing we keep pushing ourselves to do better. The more we know, the better we can do. So with that, let's just, let's get in to 2024 Super Zoo. Well, no, actually not quite. Because because what I really want to say before we talk about Super Zoo is that I, I am planning to do a full episode about my cat, Romeo. I did, uh, I'm still... I'm still feeling all the feels. I'm still working my way through a lot of things. And um, every, everyone on social media was so amazing, so thoughtful and caring. Um, people walked up to me at Super Zoo and told me how sorry they were for my the loss of my cat. And it I just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I'm trying not to cry right now. I'm tearing up. Um, it's never easy. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's never easy. But knowing so many people out there care makes it a little less difficult. So, um, goodness. <laughs> I cannot believe I'm crying right now. Anyway, let me change the topic so that I can stop crying. Um, goodness. Okay. So um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for supporting the podcast. Um, goodness gracious. All right. Super Zoo is the world's largest uh, trade show for pet, the pet industry. Um, it is very much for retailers, but so many of us go for other reasons. And it's it's incredible. It is primarily U.S. companies, um, which is a little different from some other trade shows. But I want to dig into my bag because I bring treats and samples home for Kim. And I have been home since Saturday. I'm recording this on a Wednesday. Um, and Kim has only gotten one thing out of this bag so far, and I know she's anxious. So first and foremost, the bag, if, you, if you're listening and not watching on YouTube. That's totally fine. I'm going to describe everything for you. This is a really duty, um, heavy duty canvas tote bag from Innovative Pet Lab. It's gorgeous. Even, even my husband commented on it when I um, brought it home. I had, I like put it in the pantry for, um, I thought I was going to unload it. And then I decided, no, I'm not going to unload it because I need to do this. I was going to do a lot. I actually still might do a live um, right after this, but it's full of stuff. And my husband even commented on how like nice of a bag this is. And that is not something he does because I have so many bags and he's normally like, oh my God, another bag. He was like, oh my gosh, it's a really nice bag. Um, so it really is. It's a really heavy duty canvas tote bag from Innovative Pet Lab. If you didn't catch the live I did with Jamie at Innovative Pet Lab, um, I was their guest um, at the show. And we... Uh, we uh, did a live at the booth and that was super fun. So uh, that's on Instagram. Go check that out if you haven't watched it already. But let's unload my bag and I will start just talking about all the things that I did and saw at Super Zoo 2024. So for me, Super Zoo allows me to connect, sometimes reconnect with people that are... Um, representing or owners of different brands. There are a handful of brands 
that are very small that I absolutely love that I am just ride or die for. Um, and so getting to spend time with those people is absolutely incredible and wonderful. And then there are some like more medium sized brands um, to what I would call bigger brands, specifically in the healthy pet space that I always like to just connect, talk to them. Sometimes we'll do content at the show. Sometimes we won't. This year was not a big um, content show for me because I had other plans, but let's go through. I did get to connect. The one thing that I have opened for Kim already are these beef lung treats from Oma's Pride. So I did have Adam from Oma's Oma's Pride on the podcast a while back. If you haven't listened to that podcast, please go back. They have a really cool story. They've been around for a very long time. Um, there are, so there, there are grinds that are not complete and balanced. I can totally get behind and um, their treats are also really wonderful and I can get behind them. So I brought some beef lung treats home for Kim. And if you're watching the video, yes, they're open because I did give her a piece of these because she is about as patient as I am. Um, so Oma's Pride, that was fun to just kind of go and talk to them. Oh, these. Okay. So this, if you're watching the video, doesn't have a label on it, but these are um, duck tracheas that Susanna from Forever Primal gifted to me. So Forever Primal is a really cool cool company that I have been following for so many years. I want to say it's been at least four years, maybe five years. So she, it used to be Forever Love Club. So Susanna was also on the podcast back when it was Forever Love Club. And seeing her grow and like transition this brand into what it is today, which is all chews that she, she recently moved to Tennessee. They're all being made in Tennessee now. And so I grabbed some of the duck trachea because I thought, I, and I'm going to do a video on these with Kim because she's not a big chewer and these are small, like they're long, but as far as like the width of them, they're small. So, um, and you can actually break them off into tiny little training treat size pieces. So even if she decides not to chew on one of these, um, I can still use them for training treats. And I think these are going to be really cool. And I hope she does chew on them. I have a really hard time getting her to chew on things. That's just not, she's not like a dog in that sense, like most dogs love to chew on things, which is wonderful. And when we give them healthy chews, like raw meaty bones or even air dried, um, we allow them to like naturally brush their teeth and keep their teeth and oral health like in tip top shape. And so Kim is not like a normal dog in that sense. I have tried so many things. So I'm really excited for um, trying these duck tracheas that Susanna from Forever Love I'm sorry, it's not Forever Love Club anymore. It's Forever Primal, F-U-R-E-V-E-R, -E -E Forever Primal. And her new packaging is beautiful. Um, the educational pieces that she puts on the packaging is wonderful. I love it. So I also got to speak to Dr. Wint, who um, is the veterinary, she's a holistic veterinarian, um, big into TCVM, and she kind of... I don't, I don't know her exact role. I am going to reach out to her and talk to her about coming on the podcast or I did talk to her about it. I've just got to, she has like a whole team of people and that's, that's a thing, right? Like getting, getting through a team of people is a thing. Um, but one of the things she is, she's currently in the process of publishing a paper on the benefits, benefits of astaxanthin for dental health for our pets. And um, so she gave me this total wellness powder to try with my dog um, that you put on top of the food that has chlorella, astaxanthin, and it also has plasma in it. Um, now, what I will say is that it does also have broad spectrum hemp. I am not a big fan of broad spectrum. I much prefer, prefer full spectrum. I think that synergistically it all works so much better like that. Um, when we don't like remove anything from the plant, from the way mother nature intended it, but for just trying it out, I'm going to tr try it out and see, um, how it works for my dog. Now, if I don't, I haven't really posted much about it. I'm also ha going to hopefully soon have the founder of Teef on. I have been using Teef, which is a water additive for my dog. 
um, for her dental health. But anyway, we can talk more about that at another time. I also stopped by the Nordic Naturals booth. Jonah was not at Super Zoo. So I am connecting with Jonah to have him on the podcast as well. Um, but they did gift me a big bottle of their Omega-3 Pet, which is wild anchovy and sardine oil. So again, um, I like it's a glass bottle. Um, it's a blue glass bottle, so we're not getting like the sun rays and things like that, degrading, denaturing the oil inside. Um, I I also feel like Nordic Naturals is just a really clean, honest, good company. So um, they're you know third party purity tested all the things. So I am happy to have brought that home. I ran into my very good friend, Sean from Earth Buddy. He's been on the podcast twice. Most recently, we were talking about anxiety specifically. Um, but uh, he gifted me with some of his colostrum. So this is Earth Buddy colostrum. It is bovine colostrum. It also has a whole plant hemp extract as well as some organic blueberry powder. So this is something that I have been, I talk, when I talk about colostrum, the ethical concerns are very big concerns for me. And I don't use it a whole lot for myself or for my clients for that reason. Um, I very much trust Sean and his sourcing and knowing that he's doing the right thing when collecting colostrum. Um, and so I feel comfortable using this. I want to use colostrum both for me and for my dog, um, Kim, for the health benefits. But again, I am so, I had a while back Dr. Joe Casper on who also does a very small batch goat colostrum. And I have used his colostrum with Kim in the past because, again, I feel very comfortable and confident that um, it is the most ethical sourcing uh, as far as colostrum goes. So um, these are the only so far colostrums that I have been willing to try because of those ethical concerns. And um, so I am very excited to try this. He did tell me that because I told him I was going to try it and he was like, it's really, really like gross and bitter. Um, so I, I will maybe even do a reel of me trying this. I think I'm just going to shoot it, honestly, like put it with a little bit of like water or milk in a shot glass and like shoot it um, to see if, if that helps. But he was like, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but I am very interested in, in seeing the, the effects that that can have on both me and, and my pet. I also got to talk to Side by Side. Now, I actually saw Side by Side my first year at Super Zoo, and I didn't, like, I was into it. I liked it. I think I did a reel uh, at their booth. That would be three years ago now. But I actually got to talk to Carol, the owner of Side by Side this year, and I grabbed some samples for Kim to try because I know more now. I know more of what I'm looking for now, and looking at ingredient labels comes a lot easier to me now. And so my first Super Zoo was very overwhelming. I didn't like, I don't feel like I came out with um, a whole lot of like, I like this and I recommend this because I was learning so much. And this year was very different in that. I have learned so much that I am much more confident in just being able to go grab an ingredient. Thank you, Kimberly. This is a pet podcast. Um, so in just being able to look at an ingredient label before ever speaking to anyone at the booth, because when you talk to somebody, when you talk to somebody, um, they're selling themselves right all the time and often being paid to sell a product or a brand. Um, so looking at an ingredient label, I'm like, Thank you, monkey. Okay. Good girl. Okay. Um, looking at an ingredient label before I start talking to somebody has been a game changer for me. Um, and I really like the ingredient labels for side by side. So I grabbed some of the rabbit recipe in the freeze dried for Kim to try because I do try to feed her more cooling foods. She does tend to run pretty hot. And that's one of the cool things about side by side is that they are trying to make 
um, TCVM and food energetics more accessible to the public and what they're doing with their their food and um, formulating their recipes. So I did grab, wait, oh, I grabbed a rabbit and a duck. Haha, <laughs> both are cooling. This is what I grabbed for her to try. And hopefully um, Carol will be on the podcast sometime very soon as well. She was very, very nice. I had a really good conversation with her and um, talking about incorporating food energetics into, well, everything we do, because that's obviously something she's very passionate about. So I have just a few more things to show you or to talk to you about. I often talk about small batch and I just happen to have some like samples here. Um, I had really good conversations with the people at Small Batch. Um, I brought some samples home for Kim, even though it's obviously something I buy anyway. Um, there, and, and depending on how closely you follow pet food, um, and you may not, and that's totally okay. Somebody like me, I follow it very closely. Not too, it, well, it was earlier in this year, I believe. I am really bad with time frames. Please forgive me. But I believe it was earlier this year. People started freaking out because their freeze-dried recipes, um, the ingredient labels changed to include zinc glyconate, uh, which is a synthetic, and everybody lost their minds. And I don't necessarily blame them uh, because I am not big into synthetics either. And... So they, I don't think too many people were like, oh, I'm not feeding them anymore. But certainly I'm sure some people did because they want whole food and they don't want synthetics in their food. Granted, this was just in their freeze-dried lines. Um, and I had a really good conversation with them about, and the, and the CEO, about um, what happened, why it happened. and. Actually, they were very transparent about what happened in that there was never an intention to put that in the food, but because their co-packer did it, they felt an obligation to put it on the label, which is what they did. And I think that speaks highly of the level of transparency that they want to have with consumers and that they are, um, they have been since this whole thing happened, um, reformulating their freeze-dried recipes and um so they will be coming out with a new formula in their freeze-dried recipes by he told me it was gonna be the fourth quarter but likely the packaging changes um won't be uh, uh, widely available until probably the first quarter of next year because you you just run through packaging like you have to run through whatever packaging you have and that makes sense as well so their level of transparency made me very happy and even though I am not a fan of using synthetics in foods, I um, it's not necessary. And they know it's not necessary as well. And that is why they are reformulating. So I'm very happy about that and um, looking forward to working more with Small Batch. So I've got two more um, samples to show you, talk to you about. I wish we had Smell-O-Vision right now because Project Suds um, gave me this beautiful candle um and i chose the coco limon which is everything right now like it is giving me everything right now um i love her mission i love the mission of project suds i love that they do everything clean the the wicks are cotton um they're very they um let's see it's soy vegan handmade in the USA, completely pet safe, and her entire mission is to be plastic free. So you will not find anything in the Project Suds line that is in plastic. And I am so here for that. Um, I'm really, this, this honestly is the reason why I wanted to record this today because I so have been wanting to burn this, but I wanted to get my haul on video first. It is giving me everything right now. So very excited for Project Suds and to talk to her more and um, collaborate with her some more. Also, the Becker's Bites booth. So I did bring home a sample from Becker's Bites. Kim loves their liver 
Blair and team, um, it, they're all still handmade, which is wonderful. I got to talk to Rodney and Karen some more. Um, they're just incredible human beings that I absolutely love and adore. Um, getting to talk to them, hang out with them, see them was absolutely wonderful. Um, they are, they're changing the world and they are changing pets' lives all over the world. And I could not be happier that they are doing that. Um, so that was my haul. Of course, I spent quite a bit of time at the Green Juju booth. I got to meet um, Michelle from Magical Mutts Michelle and spend some time with her and uh, so many people. Rita Hogan um, got to hang out with her a little bit. She gives me the best advice every time I talk to her, which I absolutely love. And um, so, so many people. Michelle Allen from Monkey's House. I have literally a stack of business cards like this that I have to get through. Um, Carol from Mind Pet Platter says she has some really exciting things coming up. So I'm going to have her back on the podcast. Um, let's see. Four Legger is going to be on the podcast. Uh, I just talked about Steve from Small Batch. Um, yes, so much, so much cool stuff going on happening. Um, Scout and Zoe's. I am just, yeah, we're going to do all the things. We're going to talk about all the things. The next year of podcasts are going to be if I were speaking in emojis, I would give you a fire emoji right now. So um, it's always wonderful to get to connect and reconnect with people who I absolutely love and adore in the healthy pet space. I am very intentional. So Super Zoo is like three-ish, maybe more football fields. It is humongous. It is huge. You cannot get through it um, in the two and a half days they give you. Um, and I am very intentional about where I expend my energy. The first year I was not, and I learned very quickly that I have to be incredibly intentional about where I go, who I visit. I do not hang out anywhere but the healthy pet section. The natural section is what they call it. Um, I go run through the uh, new product showcase, which was very lackluster this year. There's really not even much to mention other than... Um, an olive pit cat litter that I'm going to be looking into some more. And other than that, like very lackluster, the emerging brands, I was also not loving other than innovative pet lab was in the emerging brand section this year. They're absolutely amazing. Wonderful. I love them so much. They are not going to be in emerging brands next year. They hopefully will be in the natural section next year. And um, then I can just spend all of my time in the natural section uh, which is what I do because people tell them, they're like, oh my gosh, did you see the Purina booth? Did you see the this booth? Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, no, I actually did not because I am not putting my energy there. I don't have any intentions of, um, I mean, obviously I'm following everything that's going on as much as I can in the pet food space. And um, apparently the Purina booth was very dead this year. I actually think the attendance at Super Zoo was down this year, and I think that was for two reasons. I think, one, they absolutely cracked down on attendance and who they let in, and that you could see. Um, two, so many people were sick. Oh, my gosh. So many people were sick. Uh, so there's that. I also got to hang out a little bit more with Amanda from Nautical Dog. She's one of my most favorite people in the whole wide world. And she came to Super Zoo this year. So um, if Super Zoo is on your radar, if it's not on your radar, um, you know, if you think it, it might be something you're interested in going and seeing and checking out, I would highly recommend that you do take a moment and look at it and see if it's something for you. If you are part of the healthy pet space, especially because it is growing, the healthy, the natural section at least doubled in size this year from last year. Like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. Seeing that trend constantly growing from year to year to year has been just amazing. Um, listening to uh, Dr. Karen Becker and her mom, Mama Becker, um, talk about the first, so it's been like I don't even know how long, 20 years um, since Becker's Bites has been attending Super Zoo. And it was like literally three booths in the healthy or natural section when they started doing it. I don't remember what the third booth was. It was Becker's Bites, Steve's Real Food. And then I don't remember what the third one was, but they were talking about how literally the first year they did it, the natural section, it was literally three booths. And to see what it is now is 
amazing. That gives my heart like little wings. I'm like pitter pattering with joy over how big the natural section is getting because us pet parents are demanding it. And so that's my big takeaway from Super Zoo is that you matter. You as a pet parent matter so dang on much. How what you choose to spend your money on determines the trajectory of whatever niche you are spending your money in. And so thank you so much for what you are doing and for demanding more and better. And um, please keep doing that. And I hope to see you at SuperZoo next year if you were not there this year. If you were there this year, um, I really enjoyed seeing you. So, so dang on much. Um, yeah. So we're going to have another guest episode next week. And again, I will, I am planning to do an episode on Romeo. Um, I just need to get my bearings and I don't want to cry the whole time. Um, I'm going to be picking, by the time you hear this podcast, I will have picked him up and it's going to be very emotional for me. So um, yeah, there's just so much with that. But anyway, Please have a fabulous rest of your day. Give your pets some extra love from me. Next week, we will be back with another guest episode. Until then, have a fabulous day.